deficit. In fact, the government is now twice as big as it was 10 years ago. It is spending double what it spent 10 years ago. I, I remember in the year 2000. It wasn't that long ago. And I remember thinking that the government was pretty big. Now it's doubled in size. And a lot of Americans, you know, most of them, don't even earn as much as they did 10 years ago. The stock market is a little bit lower than it was 10 years ago. How can the country afford a government that's twice the size? Meanwhile, I just read in, in the paper today that the budget deficit for the month of February was an all-time record high. The biggest deficit in any one month in American history, $220 billion. That's a deficit for one month. That used to be a big deficit for a year. Now we did it in one month. And you know, it's going to be worse. I wouldn't be surprised if next year's deficit was $2 trillion. You know, they're forecasting it as about $1.45 trillion, but that's based on a rosy assumption that the economy gets better. It's not going to get better. It can't get better. It's impossible for the economy to get better with the government growing at the proportion that it is. Because the government, member doesn't have any resources. In order to sustain itself, it has to suck the resources out of the private sector. How can the economy possibly survive with the government spending almost $4 trillion a year? I mean, it is enormous. You know, if, if you really want to go back in time, 100 years ago, the government spent 5% of GDP. All level, federal, state, and local, they spent 5% of GDP. And we, we prospered. We had an industrial revolution. We became the richest country in the world because the government was tiny. Now the government is spending... 43% of the GDP, and it's going through the up straight up. It's not even anywhere stopping. So somebody has to get to Washington and put an end to this. Put an end to it right now. See, we have all these you know guys in Washington who think that the way to solve problems is to make government bigger. That can't work. The bigger government gets, the worse the problems become. They think, well, we, if we can just spend money that we can stimulate out of this crisis. But we can't get out of this mess by spending money. That's how we got into this mess. Right? We borrowed money and spent it. The only way to get out of this mess is to do the opposite of what got us into it. So instead of spending money, we have to save money. Right? So Americans can't go out and buy more stuff. We can't buy new cars or you know, buy more you know, trinkets. We, we, we have too many. We have to save our money. We have to put our money in a bank. And when you do that, then businesses have access to capital. They, have, they can borrow money. They can make the investments necessary to grow the economy, to provide goods and services, and to provide employment opportunities. But we can't do that unless we save. But who's going to save when interest rates are zero? And how can we save if the government's taking all our money in taxes, and whatever we do save, well, the government borrows it and spends it on government programs that we don't need. So we have to, get, we have to do the opposite of what we've been doing. And it's not just individuals who have to save. The government has to save. So the government has to shrink, right? Instead of growing the government to stimulate the economy, they need to shrink the government because that's the only way to stimulate the economy because you remove the burden of government from the economy. And that means slashing federal payrolls. I you know, just learned recently that the average federal worker earns twice the average private sector worker. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, there are employees. They work for us. How can they earn twice what we do? We have to have pay cuts. We're broke. We have to cut entitlement spending. We can't afford... Uh, to spend money like we are on Medicare, on Social Security. You know, Social Security has been bankrupt actuarially for a long time. They have better than $10 trillion in unfunded liabilities. But today, this year, is the first year since 1982, which precipitated a major tax hike. Social Security is actually bankrupt right now on a cash flow basis. We are paying out more in Social Security benefits right now than we collect in taxes. We are at the point right now where Bernie Madoff had to turn himself in. Right? That's exactly where Social Security is. We have to tackle that. And as bad as Social Security is, Medicare is way worse. They, we, their, Medicare is in debt $30 trillion. It is completely out of control. We can't, you know, we can't keep spending this money. So we've got to cut that. We've got to abolish a lot of government departments. We've got to consolidate some of these agencies. We can't afford all this government. It ha if we don't cut the government, they will destroy the economy. And I think the crisis that is coming is going to be not just a financial crisis, but a currency crisis. I think at the rate we're spending money, printing money and borrowing money, that the people around the world who are lending it to us, and it's, you know, it's Japan, it's China, it's Saudi Arabia, and it's not individuals, it's government. It's foreign governments that are lending money to our government so we can get bigger and bigger and bigger. But at some point, they're going to figure out that they're not going to get their money back, that, we're, that we, can't, we, we can't pay it. Of course we can't pay it, and they're going to stop lending. And then all they have is Ben Bernanke and his printing press. And when we're just financing all the spending with the printing press, that's it for the economy. Because prices <coughs> run through the roof.
Perhaps you should. Uh, we'll the senator yield. Perhaps you should. Oh, oh, like ten minutes, Rob. All right. Anyway, so let me just wrap it up, and I'll take your question. So, <laughs> well, the, the, the one hope is, like, if I go, to, if I if I can simply go to Washington, I will do my best to put a stop to this. All I got to do is is find forty other senators that I can convince to stand firm and not raise that national debt ceiling. If we can stop Congress from increasing the debt ceiling, we can force them to make the spending cuts that they need to do because they have no choice. They can't raise taxes because if I can block the increase in the debt ceiling, I can also block any tax hike. It's going to force massive spending cuts across the board, and that's what we need, and we need that now. We can't wait. Time is running out. That's why I'm only looking for really one term in the Senate because I think if I can't do what needs to be done in one term, it's, not, it's too late to do it. But anyway, thank you for having me here, and I will answer any questions that you have on, on any issue that's on your mind. Do you have any economic experience? <laughs> yes. Question. Two, two, two real quick questions. Number one, what do you think of uh, Lindsey Graham and Chuck Schumer's card, card that they want to put out, national ID card? And the other one is, would you be willing to run on um, repealing the health care bill if they should decide to put it through? Well, I am against uh, national ID cards. I don't even like the fact that they now have turned Social Security cards into a national ID. They weren't supposed to do that. In fact, initially, they, they said they would never do that. And, of course, the government does require you have to give your Social Security number out almost to do anything now. So it's actually like a national ID card. And, yes, I mean, we, I would love to, if they do enact the health care, I would certainly want to repeal it. It is a major step in the wrong direction. I just said what a disaster Medicare is. I mean, it actually costs. You can go back and look at what the, the budget, what they estimated it would cost when they first enacted it, and it's way over 10 times, adjusted for inflation. They were so far off on what they thought Medicare would cost. It's completely broke. They've done a horrible job. The problems in health care are, are a result of government interference in the free market. If we had a free market in health care, it would be way, it, the prices would be falling every year. Health care would be getting less expensive. Insurance would be falling, just like cell phones or laptop computers. The only reason that the free market is not bringing prices down is because the government won't let it. The, the solution to health care is simple. We can enact it in a day, and the benefits would be almost immediate in terms of lower health care prices, lower insurance prices. There's a lot of good that we can do, and it will cost taxpayers not one nickel. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah. What, what do you have specifically, specific targeted uh, cuts that you would make? Departments, programs, etc. Have you looked at that yet? Yeah, well, I want to pretty much cut across the board. I mean, there are a lot of departments that we don't even need. That They're certainly not authorized by the Constitution. The federal government is involved in so many things that it shouldn't be involved in. So I want to just start, you know, cutting across the board. I mean, one of the examples I've given at these meetings is the Department of Energy. I mean, we should certainly abolish it. It was established in 1979 by Jimmy Carter. Why did we establish it? To reduce our dependence on foreign oil. Well, when we established it, we imported around 40% of our oil. Now it's 70%. Well, it's a complete failure based on the only reason it's here. So why don't we get rid of it? That saves $30 billion, you know, and, and just go down the line. There are all kinds of departments that weren't here in the past. We don't need them. They keep creating new departments. Government just always grows. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Meanwhile, we were a more prosperous nation when government was a lot smaller. So let's just start shrinking it. And the bottom line is we can't afford it. We would actually have to double our taxes to afford the government we have right now. Does anybody want to double their taxes? Does anyone not think they're paying enough in taxes? We should double it? Well, if we're not willing to pay for the government, then let's get rid of it. Yes, Mr. Obama thinks we should double the taxes. <laughs> the next question, please. Yes. Uh, where do you stand on the social issues? I mean, the well, way. which one? I saw the debate and uh, abortion, gay marriage. Yeah. Uh, do you think they should be states' rights? Well, of course. I mean, my position on all the issues that fall under the social issues, mm -hmm. gay marriage, you know, uh, um, abortion, whatever, is that I don't see anything in the Constitution that gives a U.S. senator or the president the right uh, to do anything there. I think those are rights that are re reserved to the states and to the people. So as a senator, I would vote against uh, anything, for example, if there was some, you know, funding, federal funding for abortions, of course, I would vote against it. You know, I believe that if a state uh, wants to pass a law that restricts abortions, it's not the federal government's business to interfere with what that state does. So I I'm very neutral uh, one way or another. If a state wants to have, you know, a gay marriage, well, that's up to the state. I'm not going to, you know, as a senator, tell the states how to define marriage. I don't see anything in the Constitution that says that it's my job to figure out what, how to define marriage. So, you know, whatever my, I have my personal views on all these issues, but my personal views aren't going to influence.